Florence Chow speaks many languages, Japanese, Chinese, and English for starters. And rumor has it she can also talk to plants too. She also knows how to talk to machines or at least how to get them to be a bit more intelligent. Today, she's going to talk about machine learning and IoT, but we're going beyond the buzzwords to learn about how you can use machine learning at the edge on microchips MCUs. Welcome to Tech Chats, Florence. Thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone. My name is Florence Chow, product marketing from 32-bit MCU division at Microchip. Okay, so this is the second episode in a three-part series on smart homes and buildings. So let's talk about how machine learning on MCUs works in those applications. So many companies across virtually all verticals have realized they can transform their business by mining less new sources and amounts of data to make insightful decisions. And they understand that doing so ahead of the competition leads to long-term success. And to get there, they want to leverage more of their computing resources and uh, create IoT networks to monitor building floors or farm fields and so forth. And so with the latest technology advancement, machine learning software techniques allow the operation to be run at the edge in very small energy efficient modules such as tiny ML as opposed to a uh, hyperscale data center. And the machine learning can now be executed on edge devices, deliver faster real-time insights for a much better user experiences and increase the revenue. So why do we need to move machine learning from these hyperscale data centers out to the edge? Yeah, so, uh, so the technology is ready, but what is really driving machine learning to the edge? So the first one, data transit is expensive. And the IoT data volume is growing much faster than bandwidth to the cloud. So larger data volumes require larger networks, which then cause more and consume more power. Another reason is power consumption, because power consumption matters across the compute spectrum, whether it is um, a small battery power or energy harvesting edge device or an edge server plugged into a central power source. Transmitting data drains the battery more than computing the data. So the ability to transmit less data by performing local compute makes the battery last longer. And then another reason is a reduction in network infrastructure costs, such as bandwidth, transmission, and operations. Uh, that is definitely another key benefit. The IoT grows, and we propel more intelligence to edge devices. Latency becomes more important. So for instance, if you are driving in autonomous vehicles, each vehicles need many second response time when it comes to braking or otherwise reacting to other vehicle circumstances and cannot wait for the cloud to analyze a real time situation before acting. Also, edge solutions enables enterprises to address crucial reliability and safety requirements to reduce the potential for unanticipated downtime or malfunctions that can quickly add up to millions of dollars in repair costs and maybe lost revenue, and not to mention the safety of on-site workers. And lastly, any discussion regarding IoT is incomplete if it does not address security. So whether due to the sensitive nature of the data, company policies, or in response to regulatory requirements, many companies may prefer to keep sensitive or more valuable data locally. So similarly, end user prefer to keep as much personal information as possible constrained to their edge devices. Okay, now walk me through some of these examples of what it looks like when you take machine learning out of the data center and put it into these edge devices. Yeah, so definitely the, uh, there are many uses that you can you can have for machine learning and it is sometimes beyond your imagination. So one of the biggest reasons that machine learning is leading the smart home and the building market is that these devices can be better used to serve in customers. So for instance, thermostats can get a better understanding of the desires in the daily schedule of their residents, as well as external factors that influence temperatures. This enables them to adjust their own settings automatically 
for optimal temperature, which is both more convenient and more energy efficient. Another critical reason that machine learning is leading the smart home in the building market is that these devices can save both enterprises and end customers from big repair costs and uh, inconveniences due to device downtime. So for instance, by monitoring the behavior of motors, actuators, or active components of HVAC or home appliance, AI could predict they may fail soon and automatically schedule a technician to check up and fix. Or AI could schedule a virtual firmware upgrade to maximize the device performance or to extend its lifetime. And ultimately, machine learning can bring the convenience to our daily life. So for instance, AI trained motion gesture recognition to turn on and off or dim the light or to switch the color of the light. Another example is that your AI assistant, knowing that you are driving home with a gas in the car instead of driving alone like you usually do, it will automatically turn on the coffee maker at home and brew you two cups of coffee instead of one. So with AI and machine learning, a lot of things beyond our imagination can be achieved one day. All right. Now, at the beginning, you mentioned AI on hyperscale data centers. And I think a lot of us, when we think of AI, think of high performance CPUs, GPUs or ASICs. So how do you bring that capability to a low power MCU? Yeah, so uh, running machine learning models on microcontrollers is one of the most exciting developments of the past years, allowing small battery power devices to detect complex motions, recognize sounds, or find anomalies in sensor data. So microchip as a leader in embedded applications, we have every component you need for the edge, IoT, communication, and the security. And we are the best candidate to provide you the computing power or brain behind any edge device running machine learning from 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit MCUs, even to MPUs and FPGAs. And in order to bring machine learning solutions faster to the market, we partner with third parties who are already well established and are major players in the machine learning communities, such as Tiny ML or ARM AI ecosystem. Our partner's SDK is available for download and it's very easy to integrate and deploy. What's more, we are now making it even easier to add machine learning at the edge by integrating our partner solutions to MP Lab X, Microchip's unified IDE. So here uh, are some of our initial partners in machine learning algorithms and models. Cartesian's Nano Edge AI Studio is the first integrated development environment that enables machine learning and inference directly on any ARM Cortex M microcontrollers. So you can easily load a custom-made Nano Edge AI library inside your code and instantly give you the ability to enable local learning and inference capabilities to your code. Cartesian will also have solutions based on our Cortex M0 Plus MCU 7D21 paired with different sensors for anomaly detection in end applications. Edge Impose cloud-based tiny ML lifecycle solution transforms developers' ability to deploy machine learning models anywhere from Cortex M microcontrollers to Edge gateways. It is a developer platform with open source device SDK supporting any type of sensor. And Edge Impulse will have a demo based on our SAM IoT board and showcase how you can plug the board into their ecosystem. It also brings its support to a community board, Wheel Terminal, which is a very versatile embedded system with a powerful Cortex M4 7D51 MCU from Microchip. It allows you quickly collect real-world sensor data, train machine learning models on this data in the cloud, and then deploy the model back to your wheel terminal. 
with existing machine learning examples such as building a system for continuous motion recognition or a system to distinguish different types of alcohols. So if I wanted to look at bringing AI and machine learning to an edge device, where should I start? So Microchip will launch our own machine learning evaluation kits based on our existing hardware boards with our partners' solutions. So motion gesture demo based on our Cortex-M0 Plus MCU SAM C21 will showcase the machine learning with touch gestures. The hex file and the free library with basic gestures will be available for download. We will also launch two machine learning bundle evaluation kits with our sensor partners. One is based on our Cortex M0 Plus MCU SAM D21 with TDK's 6S's MEMS module. The other is based on SAM D21 IoT board and the IMU Click board with Bosch's inertial motion sensors. All the projects and the hex files are available to download from tools page and the solution will also be included in our Harmony V3 software framework. And you also have a couple of TensorFlow Lite solutions that, as I see it, address some privacy issues that we see when we're moving data between the edge and the cloud. TensorFlow Lite is another uh, platform that's very easy for developers to start their machine learning projects. So to deploy machine learning models on IoT devices, TensorFlow Lite is an open source deep learning framework for on-device inference. It is very easy to start with. Basically, you pick a new model or retrain an existing one, convert the TensorFlow model into a compressed flat buffer with the TensorFlow Lite converter. Take the compressed file to load it into your embedded devices, and then that's it. Or you can decide if you want to further optimize it if you choose to. So Mouser, as one of our partners, has their demo project. So they have a person detection project based on our Cortex-M4, some E54 MCU, with full step-by-step setups, instruction, and software available at Mouser's GitHub site. Actually, we have another partner, Adafruit, who is leading in open source hardware, also has a TensorFlow Lite for microcontroller kit associated with an audio wake word recognition demo project based on our Cortex M4 SAM D51 MCU. So definitely check out Microchip's new machine learning design center for more information and solutions and start to evaluate and build your prototyping with our machine learning evaluation kits. Thanks for joining us today, Florence. If you'd like to learn more about using machine learning on Microchip's MCUs, Click the links in the description or visit mauser.com. Also, check out the other episodes in this three-part series on smart homes and buildings. And be sure to check back soon for the next episode of Tech Chats.